Is it politics as usual in Capitol Hill? Well, it may be. Army Brad and Tom Coates in the house today as we talk politics. Looking for your voice. Always wanted here on The View from a Pew. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started. Ha! Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started in here. Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now, let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. That's 855-244-0077. Now, here's your host. J. Michael McCoy. All right, four minutes after the hour, and here we are live on 99.3 KTIA, powered by webcast1live.com. It's Wednesday. It's politics. Army Brad in the house along with Tom Coates. But before we get to some real politics, we need to congratulate our good friend Jonathan Narses, who got married uh, over the weekend and uh, made the national news. Oh, that was him. That was him. Leave it to Jonathan to figure a way to make national news on your wedding. Yeah, I mean, and and knowing Jonathan as I do, you wonder if it wasn't rigged, but of course it wasn't. Well, I know it. It's hard for me to believe anybody could rig something like this, but he just, I was years ago, Mac, I was uh, in one of these uh, local tabloids accused of being a media whore. Yes. And this is even before you and I hooked up. Uh, I don't imagine what the guy would call me today, but a, a true media whore is Jonathan Narsis. Uh-huh. And I, that's why I was even a bit suspicious when I, <laughs> I saw this thing on the nation. Jonathan, oh, is this rigged? Is this is this yeah. put I, up? I watched it on CNN. I, I watched it on Fox. I saw it on another national news show. He was all over the place, and it shows the video going all the way down yep. and he's got a hold of the new bride and, yeah. and he looks pretty calm doesn't he yeah it, him and uh were like eight or nine in a gondola yeah not what they call those gondola. baskets uh-huh. that hang below a, a, a hot air balloon uh was this in california or colorado i don't know how a hot air balloon goes down with jonathan narciss in it <laughs> so anyway apparently this thing hit the ground and then tipped over no one was injured and it made the national news how could you run out of hot air with jonathan narciss in the I, gondola I, I don't think i it don't was. the fire could go out john could just talk, talk and it'd stay up wouldn't yeah. it anyway he and his bride are uh, safe uh, at home now arrived yesterday and uh uh but uh, you you got to admit i mean <laughs> Nobody deserves that more than Jonathan. <laughs> you know, a little national press on your on your uh, wedding day. Oh, so we'll have him on the radio here one of these days, and he'll tell us the story. Um, all right, there is so much news coming out of Washington today, and uh, it's it's hard for me to deal. And and I I will be honest with you, I'm glad that my direction of talk and uh, purpose in life has switched from. Uh, uh, politics to uh, talking about Jesus, because right now I think that my blood pressure would be over the top because uh, Barack Obama is just, I mean, he's just a liar. I mean, he's just, right? I mean, it, I, I mean, I, this is one of those times I think I need Bradshaw here just to balance me out. But, well, you know, I, I will not, under no circumstances, raise taxes on the middle class. And he raised taxes on the middle class. Biden's floating the rumor today that he may use a presidential what what's it called presidential order executive order Max. executive order to ban uh, multi uh, Brad what are they called multi bullet Flip. magazines or magazines clips, depending on the weapon that you're using it with uh, and you know we were told four years ago <laughs> that his administration would be transparent and it's been anything but transparent the interesting thing about it is uh, two years ago when Harry Reid was up and running for his life. They thought he wouldn't make it, and then he got the big casino money and, and, yeah. and some other endorsements. And to appease the gun owners and the NRA, he actually inserted wording in the Affordable Care Act, more affectionately known by many of us as Obamacare, uh-huh. wording in there that they would not be able to um, uh, use uh, any information gathering uh, to target or to involve gun owners. 
Uh, now, the word out, the latest word is that um, Senator Reid is evolving on his position on guns. He's been elected. That's the Democratic term for flip flopping. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember that term being used for Obama's uh, change in heart over the um, right of a uh, man and a man to marry? Correct. Where a few years prior, when he was running for election, he believed that the institution was reserved man for and a man woman. and a wife. Yes. A man and a woman. But uh, he evolved, and apparently, uh, Senator Reid. The trustworthy uh, uh, stalwart that he is is evolving on his position on uh, on the Second Amendment and guns now too, but the but the language in the Affordable Care Act says they cannot gather information have, having to do with uh, with the gun ownership. So, but they disregard laws all the time, Mac. And they disregard the and, the Constitution. Why wouldn't they disregard their own right. laws? You're I mean. right, but it is in there, and it's a little bit of a sticking point for him as they implement this monster called Obamacare. Well, there are uh, so many people uh, on both sides of the fence that seem to be fed up with politics as usual in Washington. But the the, the latest moves by the Obama administration, uh, I heard uh, uh, Huckabee talking today about how, you know, the Democratic Party talks about women's rights and it, it, bringing women to the top and how the Republicans created a war on women and yet not one cabinet position that Obama has filled has been filled by a woman. That's right. And they say that they're more concerned over the quality of the applicant and the uh, ones they're going to submit rather than gender. And so they don't let gender or color get in the way of proposing that the best qualified individual uh, be nominated. And then, of course, we can go on to later to our discussion about some of their nominations of Chuck Hagel and yeah. some of these other people. But uh, uh, and now Clinton is uh, getting ready to step down, but swear she's going to testify on the 9-11 attack in Benghazi, yeah. uh, which, you know, is just going to fall flat. They're well, just going to she did they're going to get her, and hit her head. So chances are she will not recall very much after her head trauma from <laughs> That's a good point. Being sick. That's a good <laughs> That's point. A good point. I don't recall. That's always the uh, do dodge of the scoundrel, isn't it? No, I don't recall. that. Yeah, I don't. I don't recall. I, I've, I've got head injury and I, I don't recall. Well. Uh, Tom Coates, along with Army Brad, Father Tattoo in the house today. Of course, another big uh, conversation on Capitol Hill today as Joe Biden uh, uh, starts a conversation on gun control uh, as the liberals continue to use every situation. What is it that Emmanuel said? You never waste a good. R Rahm Emanuel was quoted as saying that you never want to waste a good crisis. You right. Never let a crisis go to waste. And so. Uh, uh, I think that's uh, one of the watchwords of this administration. They were waiting for some gun violence incident. Now that they've passed the election, they wouldn't have dared go on to this point prior to November election. Yeah, they didn't talk about it when the Aurora, uh, you know, shootings were when the theaters, and that was before the election. Nope. And again, Harry Reid was responsible for inserting language into Obamacare that protected the rights of gun owners from uh, federal uh, information gathering that might lead to their confiscation. But now they're past that big November election, and uh, they're going to be much, and that's why it's going to be a real tough road to hoe for us the next few years, Mac. They seem to be, this Chuck Hagel uh, appointment that he's making, uh, got outcry from both sides. Obama doesn't care. He is seemingly fearless now and confrontational with not just Republicans, but anybody that gets in the way of his agenda. And his agenda is going to, Come quickly, I think, to the forefront. We need to talk about that this hour. All right. Twelve minutes after the hour on this, the uh, uh, ninth day of January in the Lord's year 2013. Uh, gorgeous day here in central Iowa. 44 degrees. Things are melting as, uh, um, I don't know, is it global warming? I mean, you got to admit, the weather the last couple of years has been just bizarre. It is, but the uh, but the world as a whole for the last 16 years actually has not gotten any warmer. Really? Is that the statistic? Yeah. and uh, the ice cap, uh, unlike Al Gore said, is not melting. The polar bear population that he claimed in his Earth in the Balance yeah. uh, video that he made so famous and made so many dollars off of uh, is actually expanding. By there, the way, Al Gore... more polar bears today than there by far than there was a few years ago. Al Gore now worth more than Mitt Romney with his sale of his television network to the uh, terrorists. Zero. Isn't yep. that amazing? There's been no man that decries the uh, the devastation of the oil and gas business more than Al Gore and who has profited more from that kind of... You, you mentioned the word lies earlier. 
But uh, now he disdains other suitors to sell his network to Al Jazeera, who is financed by oil. Now, how ironic is that? Apparently, the uh, the other people that work there, they believe they bought into Al Gore's uh, t- chicanery. Yeah. And uh, they were outraged when a, when an oil-financed entity like Al Jazeera was going to buy their station. Well, I don't blame them because they drank the Kool-Aid. And, uh, and, and Jim Jones is counting his, his millions as he walks away. What, 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 how, how did uh, he had an epiphany in capitalism works when it works for you? <laughs> is that what it was? What else could it be? You know, this is when I need uh, our friend, the barrister in the studio or Mr. Bradshaw. Cause I just, uh, how do they, how do they justify this hypocrisy? Well, it, at least it can't Al, be just us seeing it. Al Bradshaw refused to talk about of it. Rather a clean cut individual. I think that finally got blown away when his wife divorced him, and then the story started coming out about some of the shenanigans he was having with some of the uh, massage ladies that he would call up to his hotel room and, and then assault them. Uh, he's been managed to get out of some of those formal charges, but uh, his image there and then hypocrisy. I mean, we know that the guy flies in these gas-guzzling private jets. He has these big yachts that guzzle. I mean... He is perhaps one of the largest hypocrites that we could possibly point to, and he has financially profited. As you said, Mac, they, they decried the wealth of Mitt Romney, who I don't know of anybody that claims that Mitt Romney um, made it in, a, in an area that's hypocritical to the free enterprise system, something that he, is, that he has long championed. The irony is that Al Gore has been allowed off by the media from real scrutiny and the hypocrisy that has led him to become almost a billionaire now. Yeah, or, or more, yeah. Yeah, yeah Romney was uh, personally attacked over and over and over and scrutinized because he would buy companies, and in order to turn them around, he'd have to lay off people. Right. Uh, but Al Gore, who is the vice president of the country, who says we need to get rid of you know oil... And what it does to this planet now sells his television network to oil people. I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, and yet you hear nothing about that in the mainstream media. Um, this little TV ne- station, that what, a current TV? Current TV. That nobody watched, but it has access. Because of right. Al Gore's personal connections, they allowed them access through the cable networks. So that had some value to entities, in this case, of Islamic extremists that uh, would want to have access to our nation. So they paid a, a big premium over what typically, from a, from a viewer standpoint, mm-hmm. Mac, you understand this. Yes. Uh, the viewer standpoint would not have justified anything near this price tag. Did we, ever, did we ever hear what the price was? Oh, I did. I can't remember what it was, but it was far in excess of what you would expect. That uh, Was it something like $500 million or something like I don't that? Know, I'm looking it up. But whatever the number was, it was far in excess um, and again, I think he disdained uh, more conservative suitors. I, I'd heard that Glenn Beck and others had approached him about selling for that same reason because of I heard about Glenn Beck and access. Uh, no, 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 not going to sell to conservatives, but did mind selling to big oil interests that uh, were, in many cases, antithetical to the best interest of this country. And then they also wanted he made sure that they were able to complete it just in case the fiscal cliff was actually a cliff. So they wanted to make sure that they did it in, in a time where the tax that would normal that would have been paid was was not paid by you him. Put, so. Yeah, you put your finger on another motivation uh, by some of those people uh, to go ahead and get the deal consummated prior to taxes going up. Although it's fair for you and I to pay higher taxes, it, it's not good for for liberals. All right, this current network, uh, and that's what it's called, the current network, um, the nationwide audience could fit inside most football stadiums, <laughs> and its top viewing was 42,000 viewers. Now, understand, we have twice that, and I'm, I'm just saying, we had 113,000 viewers in the third quarter of last year on Webcast One Live, Good. and we don't have that many. Well, Mac, if you can sell this for $500 million, I want a teeny piece. Okay. Just we like need one. some paperwork to finish signing before we sell for the $500 <laughs> million. Would, would, it, there's, there's the next question we're going to ask each other. Would, would we sell this to Al Jazeera for $500 million? Yeah. 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 yeah I'm yeah, with you, yeah, Matt. Yeah. I'm with you. All right. We'll what talk you about it. Father Tattoo, will we take their money? My share's already sold. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna to wanna to know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I wanna find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not gonna to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me, but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do, I mean, fixed rider, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. We've got questions. You've got the answer. Join the conversation. It's your voice we want to hear. So call 855-244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. 321, the view from a pew on a Wednesday afternoon. Glad to have you along, Army Brad, along with Tom Coates and Father Tattoo. Now, let's just get serious about this for a minute. I just, you know, I'm looking... At Mac, I think we should offer just to sell for two fifty. We'll take half. <laughs> Webcast one live. Now this is a this is a small network that broadcasts live on YouTube, live stream, and UStream. Yep. And podcasts to iTunes, Apple TV, Roku. All right. In July one to September thirtieth, this little network had 569,461 shows either listened to or watched by 113,207 people. Now, understand, for those of you listening, I can't lie about that. In the computer digital age, you get everything to the one. There, there's no estimate averages. There's no, we think this many people watched or listened or subscribed. Every time somebody clicks on one of our programs... It registers. Yeah, but you're not you're not even counting the people that are listening on ninety nine point three. Correct. I that, I, I have so no way. So your numbers are actually low. I have no these way are, of counting. These are hard numbers and are at, at are actually your low, and they will be higher than this. This is on the world wide web, so it's heard anywhere in the world where the internet is acceptable. This business is probably I don't know what this business is worth, but. Al Gore, who had 43,000 viewers. Now, understand, and I'm not, this is going to sound funny, but it's the truth. Honey Boo Boo has more people watch her oh, yeah. than Al Gore's complete network. 
And he gets a half a billion, billion as in B, dollars for that network. Let, let's draw the line here, though. Who's more intelligent, Honey Boo Boo or Al, <laughs> or Al Gore? Gore. Yeah. Wow. I am going to go with Honey Boo Boo. Now, let's, let's get down to brass tacks. Okay, let, let, let's say we're all, the four of us are the owners of Webcast One Live, and we've put four years of our money and our time and our sweat, and we've been beat up and spit on and told we couldn't make it and blah, 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 blah. And have to settle for uh, Joy Behar to come in and host a show for us. And somebody <laughs> comes along. Never, so it's comparable. That'll never happen. <laughs> With Well, we have Bradshaw, so Joy Behar and Bradshaw, there's not I think, much difference. I think that's a trade-off. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. So Al, Al Jazeera comes along and offers us a half a billion dollars. Tom, do you take it? Uh, yes, and my criticism of Al Gore's hypocrisy goes quickly out the window and I grab the money, right? And you are just <laughs> as big a hypocrite as, as him. But the, the thing is, you, you well, were... I, see, I haven't condemned big oil. I've, I've embraced big oil all my life. <laughs> but uh, what I was going to say is it wouldn't be hypocritical for you to have a capital in, invest or a capital transaction like that because i think that's kind of what you stand for sure the 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 market the free market where you haven't tried to stop people from producing and, and selling something i mean it's the same thing as um any of the the people that are getting beat up look at the last election for for being successful success has kind of been taking a taking it on the chin for the last about six years and it, it's fine if it's if it's on the left for you to to make money, but if if you do it on the right, well then you're greedy and you should be you should be taxed at fifty percent. The like Media Research Center uh, wrote an article and quoted yeah. Gore uh, quoted this saying Al Gore rebuked an offer from conservative radio TV personality Glenn Beck to buy Current TV. Gore said, quote, the legacy of who the network goes to is important to us as we are sensitive to networks not aligned with our point of view. Consistent with who he sold it to. I, I think that's a consistent statement. I think there's no hypocrisy there. It is no great surprise to me that that man is the friend of terrorists. Then the story gets worse. While Beck told his listeners he was rejected within minutes... Gore became a lobbyist for Al Jazeera. New York Times media reporter Brian Setzer revealed that to preserve the deal and his big payout, Gore went to some of cable distributors looking for an excuse to drop the low-rated channel and reminded them and their contracts with current TV, calling it a news channel. The distributor is going to say that an American version of Al Jazeera didn't or Al Jazeera didn't qualify, possibly invoking ugly stereotypes of Middle Eastern news giants. So dropping Al Jazeera became anti-news, anti-Arab, and Islamic, uh, uh, Islamophobic. <laughs> but the bottom line is, guys, let's be straight here. Five hundred million dollars. I mean, here a tenth of that. $50 million comes our way to sell this. Do we care that it's Al Jazeera? I agree with what Brad said. We're, 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 we're I, I'm not, be, not being facetious. I'd sell. I would too. I don't care. But again, <clears throat> our positions, as Brad pointed out properly so, are not what Al Gore's positions are. This is a repudiation of what how he's made his fortune. Should be. I mean, and again, if the media would be objective for once, uh, they would point the hypocrisy out to their to their viewers and their listeners. But thinking back on everything I've ever heard of or heard said by Al Gore, and then reality, does it really surprise anybody? I mean, he invented the internet. He, that's something that he said, even though he had no part in it. And then, but nobody's ever cared. It's it's kind of like well, they Joe Biden. About it. Yeah, they joke about it. He says incredibly crazy stuff and you just say well it's Al Gore you say it's Joe Biden and and you move on because they they have a history of saying crazy stuff now well it's not just crazy it's a little deeper than that it's it's uh, it's a character issue and, and I do think that the character or lack thereof of a guy like uh, Al Gore um, 
of a guy like Bill Clinton. I mean, Bill Clinton is synonymous with philandering and lying uh, from a, from the highest position. Now, Max started off the show by pointing out some of the lies that Barack Obama tells. Um, and yet, other than conservative talk show hosts and such, uh, they're seldom called to account for it. You let a conservative stub his toe to a minor degree, and they're all over it. It, it's, it is frustrating when... And we say, well, it doesn't matter. Well, it does because the American people, some people have been described of as slow information voters. They really don't dig into any of the details. They just get the headlines. Right. They skim the top. And that, unfortunately, does have an impact, and elections have consequences, guys. We're going to have four years of very tough sledding because of the last election. Well, as you said, one of the things that amazed me with the last election cycle was Romney would say things that were true, when you when you peeled him back and he said mm-hmm. like he, he was criticized cr- well he was criticized for saying that s- security by the British during the Olympics was not what it should have been because they had to bring right. two brigades of soldiers out of Afghanistan back to yep. England for security mm-hmm. well if you have to s- start pulling combat troops out of a combat zone for security then absolutely you are correct that their security they didn't plan well on that. The and 47% he was an informed are, source after having run the Olympics previously himself. So absolutely. he wasn't just he, a, he knew like he was you and I, about. A, a, an outside, you know, somebody commentating that doesn't have background information. He did. The 47%, some of those other comments he made, Brad, were spot on from a factual true. standpoint. They're factually true. That in reality, the election is, is decided by 6% of the, the populace. There's probably about 46% that are going to vote Republican. Whatever person is on that ticket, they're going to vote for him. Mm-hmm. 47% are going to vote Democrat for whatever smiling face is on that right. ticket. Right. They, don't even, they couldn't even tell you. And just to prove it, there was all the people that would show, take the exact opposite of Obama's stands, and they would go out to the public and say, do you support him because of this? And it's oh, absolutely. Be- you know, I, I I oppose abortion, and it. I remember those. And you would watch yeah. it, and you're like, what are these people doing? Yeah, they're they're asking him questions that are diametrically opposed to the positions that Barack Obama was giving. Oh yeah, I support that. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. I support and him that's like that. what I perhaps part of what coined this low information voter comment. All right, I have to uh, go ahead and just put that collar on the air. I don't have my software up today. Uh, hi, you're live on The View from a Pew. Who's this? Hey, Mac, it's Tim. Hey, Tim, how are you? Good, how are you? Sorry I missed lunch today. I was looking forward to it and got held up. So That's all right. Glad to have you on the radio today. Um, one, of the, my, one of the things that distresses me a little bit, I guess, is that, you know, while, you know, we can, we need to beat up, I think, on our leaders to an extent. We need to hold them accountable, maybe is a better way to say that. Um we get, I think us as conservatives slash Republicans, we get it, we fall into this trap and think that just because the guy that we had up there had an R after his name, he's he was a he's a so much better than than what we have now. Um, I think that was a huge mistake, and I think that's why we lost. If you want to look at it that way, is because we put somebody up there who we tried to sell as a conservative who did everything he possibly could to alienate his base every time he turned around when he could have won huge uh brownie points from evangelicals he stubbed their nose in it and sometimes or stubbed their kicked them in the shins and sometimes would even go as far as to make it worse and rub their nose in it um you know most of the things he ever did uh were not that far to the right of what obama has actually done um i I think we need to stop looking at what happened in november to go back to look what happened in the primaries because, you know, we bought into, you want to start blaming the media, the media gave us Romney, but we were destined to lose because he was not that much different than what we had. So why would I get fired up about a guy that, that tells me that it's okay to kill some babies and it's okay, um, you know, the, the, the governor that gave us the first uh, redefinition of marriage um, and then would turn around and didn't want to have anything to do with Chick-fil-A Day or uh went after the Boy Scouts for standing up for saying they did not want to have homosexual leaders. I guess that just that bothers me. I don't think we're going to get anywhere as long as we keep saying, well, we would have been better off if Romney's there, because I don't know that anybody can prove that. I, I, I don't think it's it's dem- demonstrable. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who feel the way Tim does. Yeah, I know. 
There's a lot of people who feel that 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 Romney did not take advantage of grabbing a hold of that base, but he seemed to push. You know, the even though we all know where that number forty seven percent came from. Uh, he never really even beat that down after the Democrats tried to make a big deal out of that. No, he didn't, Mac. And what percent, we talked about it the day after the election, what percent of the uh, evangelical voters didn't vote in this last 44 election? or something like that? It's just an incredible it was, number. It was higher than that. Was it higher than I think that? Maybe, it was, maybe it was 44 than, that actually did vote. I think it was 47%. That okay. voted or didn't vote? Didn't vote. That didn't vote. So almost half of the evangelical voters just didn't vote. And so while I can agree in part with what well, Tim said. Didn't and vote, I, they, I, they voted third party, most of them. It wasn't that they didn't vote. They just didn't vote for the Republican. Well, I, uh, I, I don't agree with all the comments that Tim made, but I, I understand the sentiment, and obviously we didn't put up enough of a fight in the right areas that energized the uh, Christian conservative voters to get out. Um, so, I mean, part of what he's saying is absolutely true. We need to do a better job either getting the right candidate or the right message or both to energize our base because we got thumped and and the turnout amongst some of the core constituencies of the democrats we thought would be disenchanted some of the ones like the blacks and, and some of the uh, some of the women voters the young voters that we thought would be disenchanted turned out in numbers much higher than anybody expected yeah yeah all right cabinet appointees chuck hagel John Kerry, uh, what's with some of these, and will they face any uh, challenges in committees? We'll talk about that when we come back live on The View from a Pew on 99.3 KTIA, Iowa. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Fight the good fight on a Rebels Cause Radio. Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on a rebelscause.com. A Rebels Cause Radio is edifatainment. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people... The only way we come to know the saviorship of Jesus Christ is by bowing and acknowledging that he is Lord and King over all the earth. Jesus Christ died on a cross, paid the penalty for our sin, and by repenting of our sin and accepting him by faith, what he did for us, we are forgiven. Salvation is not a combination of faith and works. Salvation is by faith alone in God. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. We're 
the ones in the pew, not pulpit. Come on now, let's reason together. The phone lines are open, so call 855-244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. 338, 22 before the top, Salem Radio Network News at uh, the top of the hour, and then three minutes after, uh, True Blue with uh, Pastor Michael Mudloff from uh, West Kirk Presbyterian Church. All right, we're uh, in the midst of a political conversation and this let's, afternoon. Let's, let's give a hat tip. Will Rogers was supposed to be here today to discuss state politics, and uh, uh, Will had a, a blood clot go up through his heart over mm. the weekend and uh, ended up in the hospital for a while. He's recovering now, and it looks like he'll be all right. But, had a uh, stint and everything. Yeah, had a stint put in. So uh, uh, I would have liked to get Will's opinion on what you're going to talk about, because he's the first one that brought up this issue of these appointments. Yeah, and his concern over their impact on this country's relationship with the nation of Israel. But that's where we're going next, isn't it, Mac? The uh... yeah, and we'll have Will on next week or the week after, as soon as he gets feeling better. But you know, just to go back to that for just a minute, I'm, I'm, I, I just thought about it for a minute. Will is what forty, if that, if that. Mm-hmm. Uh, In fact, he, well, I won't I won't say on the air because I'm not sure he's making it public. But he's he's doing some things politically that might be of interest next time we get him on. Okay. Too. And he's a great guy, and uh, all of a sudden, he doesn't feel well. They rush him to the hospital, and they tell him, tell him he's got a blood clot that's went into his heart and the need to immediately put a stint in. Mm-hmm. That's life-changing. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden, the things that were important are probably not so as important. And the things that we took for granted must have risen to the top. Mm-hmm. Our prayers are with Will and his family. And his, and his father-in-law just died. Father-in-law has said his uh, wife, I knew that he was getting to that point. Uh, Fifteen minutes after she got the call, her father had passed away, and they were making arrangements to go to the funeral. He gets, uh, he, he starts feeling bad. They take him to the hospital, and, yeah. and that happens. So bang, bang. All right. Uh, Chuck Hagel, senator from Nebraska, uh, one of the embarrassing things that came out of Nebraska, um, uh, has, has made several anti-Semitic comments. Uh, to the point where, uh, you know, it's kind of like Mel Gibson. I like Mel Gibson. I mm-hmm. like Mel Gibson's movies. I think I would like Mel Gibson as a person. But he has said enough things, enough times over the years, that you have to know that, well, Mel and, Mel and the Jewish folks probably aren't arm in arm on a lot of stuff. That's kind of with Chuck Hagel. Mm-hmm. Chuck Hagel has had a he, – he was a state senator before he was a national senator. Uh, the Jewish people in Nebraska, even though they don't live in groves – uh, uh, they still did not like Chuck Hagel because he seemed anti-Semitic. Well, and Chuck didn't need a, a half a bottle of booze to get some of these comments out of him either. That's right, like Mel Gibson. Did. <laughs> Only a half? <laughs> now, all of a sudden, he's being nominated for Secretary of Defense. And we defend one country more than any other country except for ours in this planet, and that is Israel. Right. We already know, or do we suspect how Barack Obama feels about Israel. Do we know or do we suspect? There's a lot of evidence, wouldn't you say, Brad? I was going to say, we can only go by the things that he said and has done, right. more importantly, what he has done. Mm-hmm. And those things would make me question his his desire to continue to support our strongest ally in the region. You know what I'd be really interested in is a lot of the Jewish population voted for Barack Obama. Yeah. They were very behind Barack Obama. And it'd be interesting to see now after this nomination if they start leaving that support at the door. Because I but, I was surprised to hear they were for Barack Obama this time around, particularly after we saw the way he kind of treated Israel. But now... Yeah, but you saw the, the support decline significantly from where it was four years previous. The percentage of the Jewish vote did not come in near as heavy as it did four sure. years previous. But I'm just still su- won Florida. Yeah, I'm still surprised any still of Still won New in. York. Well, I understand. Still well, won New win, Jersey. He's going to win New York and New Jersey without question. Without, just the, because w- without the Jewish the, vote, the he D, still wins there. The D behind his name automatically gives yeah. him those states. But the, the thing, I think Barack put it best himself that he would have much more room to work after he was elected when he was saying that to the russian president to give to putin yeah yeah so uh, he all he knew he knew on the day after the election he could start he didn't have to pretend to kind of support israel right right i think that's exactly right you you look at the can't uh, be reelected why why should i hide any in, in some ways um at least we 
he's doing it right out in the open. We don't have to worry about what's happening well, behind the scenes. So that, that's that, that is an advantage, I guess. Brad, you and Mac, you look at the Arab Spring. You know what they uh, what they bragged about. You know this democracy coming to the Middle East. Well, you look at Egypt, yeah. which had been a partner, a trading partner anyway, with with Israel. They were getting forty percent of their natural gas from Egypt. That stopped. Uh, Libya, uh, Gaddafi, though he wasn't a good guy, neither was uh, Mubarak. Uh, w- was a stable force in there. We've turned it over. We're about to turn Syria over, mm-hmm. although Syria is more of a surrogate of Iran, and it's a question whether right. that'll be for the better or the worse. But the other two clearly was uh, was against the n- interest of Israel and should have been against the interest of America. And the, the thing that kind of amazes me the most was that when the Arab Spring was starting in Egypt, we put our pressure against Mubarak. We wanted to take him out. We wanted, but he wanted with, to meet, and he wouldn't. We wouldn't meet with him. With the current president, who, from my standpoint, is anti-American, anti-democ, true democracy, and could have at times been labeled a terrorist that has come to power. There's, there's no moves trying to support the same people that were wanting the things that are American. Well, in, in the Muslim Brotherhood, the Islamic extremists, whatever sect, you know, in individual sect they happen to be from, don't want true democracy. In fact, they don't even want women to be able to exercise a right to vote. I mean, they they want this, uh, you know, uh, like when Iran fell under under the Carter administration, they didn't go into a more dem- democratic system. They went into a much less democratic system run, when, run by the mullahs. And I think Egypt will continue to move that direction and it's troubling that nobody in the highest levels of our nation want to try to to do anything to at least stem the the move in the wrong in my opinion the wrong direction but, well and now you're going to put secretary of defense in there mm-hmm. who is not going to defend israel and john Kerry, i you know i don't to me john Kerry is kind of like that cartoon character droopy Remember, Droopy just kind of walked around like this and said hi to everybody. I I, I don't know what John Kerry. I mean, I know John Kerry was a senator from Massachusetts. He served. And, he served in the Vietnam War, Mac. He he was a veteran. No, you're being sarcastic. No, he's not. No, he, he, he he was. He's a, he's a veteran. Um, he was a Navy. He served like, in the Vietnam War. He was. He got four Purple Hearts. Well, that's because he wrote those up himself. But that's a different story. <laughs> he he did serve there. He was there. He was. Uh, like a patrol boat, I can't think of that. Actually, yeah. swift boat, swift boat, yeah. captain. Yeah, and, and everybody that served with him hated his guts, and they came out and kept him from. Oh, yeah. uh, Which he, they same. were the they were the nail in his coffin that didn't allow him to be the president. Yeah, uh, and and the truth started to come out about him. <clears throat> He's a professional gigolo. I mean, the man married one woman for her money. When a bigger fish came by, he jumped off of that and got on to the other one. Uh, Teresa Hines Carey, you know, he doesn't mind marrying homely women without much prospects. He's got a lot of money. Uh, and so he's made himself rich that way. I mean, he is he's, he's a scoundrel, kind of like Harry Reid and some of the others of the highest order. But is he going to, he is not pro-Israel. Hegel is much worse. Mm-hmm. We are going to have a secretary of state if he gets his way, although there's going to be a fight, guys. There's going to be a fight over some of these nominations. I find Hegel's... Not is, on Kerry, but there will be on he- Hegel. Hegel is in a very precarious position to be actually confirmed because he was a Republican, so there's lots of Democrats that are against him. There's and, some Democrats, and there's no Republicans that care for the guy much. So so who, who where are they going to find the votes to actually, I don't know. I don't it, know. And, and Barack then the Obama, is, doesn't, he knows that, but he doesn't seem to care. He thinks he can have his way. But the, the question is, does he know that so he can bring somebody in that at least the Democrats can get behind it as the, the second one and, and be able to tell the Republicans, hey, I already, you know, you already threw Hegel under the bus, so you, you have to take Maybe. whoever yeah, is that Is that what be. this is about? It's just a I straw dog? I don't know, but I saw uh, one of the Republican senators just the other day promise a floor fight and a blockage of this nomination until he gets some answers on the Benghazi thing. Speaking of Benghazi, what's going to happen with Miss Clinton and also gun control? Biden says today Obama will make a presidential order. We'll talk about it next, live.
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached. And you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Have you ever been told you're not good enough to be a Christian? Well, we have too. Join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. Now, here's your host, J. Michael McCoy. 10 to 4 at the top, Salem Radio Network News. And then 403, it's uh, Pastor Michael Mudloff from Westcourt Presbyterian Church. And True Blue, Army Brad, along with Tom Coates and Father Tattoo. Here's breaking news. This just goes right into what we're talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Attorney General Eric Holder has announced he will stay for a second term. Hmm. That's not good news, guys. That's well, not good news. with gun control, since... Uh, he He's a since- master of gun control. Look, he got rid of so many guns, he just sent them down to Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> I mean, it was, he was great. How many came back across the border with uh, the... The With body cartels, counts? Yeah. Barrel, barrel first, unfortunately. Yes, exactly right. You know that back in 95, he addressed a, a group of Democratic women and said, we've been so successful in demonizing tobacco and and getting, in, in essence, eradicating our society. We need to do the same thing with guns. And he said that, uh, what was it, 12 years ago back in 95? Or, or whatever. Yeah, tobacco, My is faulty there, tobacco is not enumerated in the Constitution as some, because my standpoint is the second amendment. If as soon as you lose the second amendment, the next one to fall is the first, first amendment. That's right. Yeah, and they say that. Uh, see, the the founding fathers could not have envisioned the type of high tech weapons that we have today. Well, neither could the founding fathers have envisioned the types of communication we have today either. And if that's the case, then we need to uh, knock out the first amendment because. The methods of communicating today are so far different than our founding fathers had. Right. They couldn't have imagined them. Now, what they had at that point, Mac, was, in the, as you guys know, and I don't have to tell you, most of your audience knows, it's not about hunting. It's not about defending right. the hunting rights. Right. It's defending the rights of the individual citizen against an oppressive government, whether that be a foreign or domestic. Right. And the weaponry that they had and were required to have back in those days was reminiscent of the type of firepower that their military had. Now, the military today has far greater firepower. Brad, you were talking about at lunch about the uh, type of technology, uh, the drones and some of the high-tech stuff that the average citizen couldn't even dream of getting their hands on. So we are not. If anything, we ought to be even better armed if we're going to defend ourselves against an oppressive army, right? I want a drone. Fly over Bradshaw's house in Grimes. (laughs) (laughs) Drones don't see into basements. (laughs) (laughs) But as far as technology goes, one of the things that made the American revolutionary soldier so effective was that we had rifled weapons and our opponents, the British, had 
muskets that were not rifled and we had a lot more range and our soldiers could fire upon them, take out their officers, because one of the things that the, the British were so disappointed in our our citizen soldiers was mm-hmm. that we were killing their officers. Who's going to control the rabble right. if the officers are dead? And it's, we weren't able to, to stand up and, and fight them toe-to-toe because they had the superior armed forces. I mean, they had the best armed forces in the world, but we could fight in a, a North American style of combat that we learned from the, the American Indians where we would wear them down just like the the Vietnamese did to us in, in yep. the 60s. Guerrilla warfare. So the technology we had, they knew about technology being critical to being successful. They couldn't envision what we have today, but that's on every level of our of our society. And it it was so that this, the true people that are the government in our republic, not, our, not the de- democracy, the republic that w- we live in, which so many people forget, so that when the government becomes tyrannical, the citizens can finally rise up. And yes, they, they have drone, drones that can send missiles in, but there has to be a place where somebody is running that and there has to be a citizen soldier that is willing to fire upon his own neighbors and and other citizens. Well, that is one of the questions, Brad, being asked now. Would the soldiers of America today, would they, up, upon being ordered to, would they go door-to-door, confiscate weapons, uh, perhaps fire on their own fellow citizens? Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that's a varied answer. I'm sure some would and some wouldn't. What, well, what do you think? Here's what Vice President Joe Biden said today. He's been charged by Obama with running a task force to prevent situations like Sandy Hook Massacre. Biden announced that he wouldn't be raising legislative solutions at all. Big deal, right? That, I mean, he's not going to raise legislative solutions. Instead, the vice president said that Obama might simply declare his preferred gun policy the law of the nation. Talking to a drooling press, Biden announced, quote, the president is going to act. There are executive orders. There's executive action that can be taken. We haven't decided what that is yet, but we're compiling it all with the help of guess who? The attorney general and the rest of the cabinet members, as well as legislative action. But we believe we will have an executive order coming from the White House. But they, Unquote. Are, they already have laws in place that... If you go back and look, other than the fact that there are gun-free zones that the person took a gun into, where you have people that are not able to defend themselves as as law-abiding citizens, right? But there's there are laws in place that if they would have been enforced beforehand, the, the people that create it, I mean, they're underage to have the weapons that they had. They have a history of mental illnesses, which so th- there's. If we enforce what we already have in place, it's just like immigration. If we enforce the laws that are in place, that's right. Then these mm. tragedies wouldn't happen. But, but it's it's a, a yeah, partially it's an enforcement. But it goes way back to. Be, well, how how do we that. enforce mental illness? The problem is the problem we have is we don't know who's going to snap. I don't know if Tom buys a gun from me. What Tom's going to do with it? He seems like a reasonable guy. I like Tom. He smokes cigars. Seems like I could probably trust him with the gun, but. What happens if Tom's wife ticked him off before she left the or before he left the house today, and he bought the gun from me, acted real cool, and then goes home and blows his wife's head off? I don't have any control over who who's crazy, and I don't have any control over predicting who snapped. I mean, we're trying to legislate something; we simply have no access to be able to. Who's got their Who's got their futuristic glasses on to tell what somebody's going to do with what what they've been given? I mean, and who wants to be the guy that declares that? You know, I. I well, I, I, what's, <clears throat> what's to stop him from taking a hammer and, and doing the same thing? There's nothing. The pro, that's, that's my point is that Tom would find something else, but I have no ability to judge Tom's mental state truly. These people weren't whacked out of their minds drooling on themselves buying guns. They, they, were, they looked and acted like normal human beings, and, and how, do, how do we judge that? I just don't know why it's about guns. Well, I, I because they want to because video to, games and TV are, are pay for the media and the media needs those things. And they want to take something that is a red herring that they can throw out there and then have people that are uninformed because knowing about weapons. When I listen to the people talking about them, it, it 
I can't help but laugh so many times because an assault weapon is just a label that they put on a weapon. All right, gentlemen, I appreciate your time today. It's another great conversation. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Looking forward to having you. John Anderson from Lutheran Church of Hope City Branch will be here. Until then, I ask only one thing of you. Pray.